Thank you. Well, thank you, Julia. Uh, Julia, I'm Larry Pape. I'm with Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. I'm in the fisheries division. And um, my job is uh, fisheries biology and fisheries education. So what I do are programs um, such as this. And the, the fun part of my job, quite honestly, is teaching kids how to fish. And teaching kids how to fish and families how to fish um, it is a lot of fun. And, and doing that, we have a lot of different things in the fishing world that we have to, to master to make ourselves wonderful and great fishermen. And so what we're going to learn today are fishing, not tying. And, and the reason we're going to learn fishing, not tying is it's a different world. It's different than, you know, just tying a knot in your shoe. Um, so, um, we have, special um, knots and uh, for fishing. Um, why do you suppose special knots, we need special knots for fishing? I'm gonna ask some of these questions. We're gonna spin through this and then we're actually gonna tie these knots. So why I'm, do you think we need special knots? I see a hand up, yes. Uh, um, so, the, um, so the weight and the hook is gonna fall off? Yes, yes. Well, there's a lot of reasons. Let's just go ahead and go through this. Quite briefly, the, 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 the slide you see now, if you can see it well, um, we're gonna talk about why a special knot and well-tied knots are important. We're gonna talk about the improved clinch knot. That's the one I've tied a million times to put hooks on the end of a line. It's my favorite. It's simple and it's really, really strong. The Palomar knot is also my second favorite knot and that's another easy one that we use to tie hooks on and we use that in special cases. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to use the materials you have and we're gonna test, we're gonna tie those knots and we're gonna test them um, with some regular fishing string against each other. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a competition to see who ties the best knots and maybe which knot is the best, the improved or the Palomar. All right, so um, going through this, the activity kits you got will have um, a, um, an, uh, a piece of bell and that's this thing with a eyelet in it. And that this is supposed to imitate a fishing lure. If you guys want to paint these up at your convenience and put an eye on it and paint a fish fin on it, um, that would be very much like a fishing lure. And so we've created these actually just to, um, to replace a big hook because these are much safer without the sharp points on it than the hooks. So we're going to use this of imitation fishing lure, this dowel with an eyelet screwed into it to tie our knots. The other part of it you received uh, is a piece of uh, paracord. And so everybody should, or actually in pairs, this works best if we all tie these in pairs, the so two students together, and you should have a string of, uh, or a length of paracord. Also, we've supplied a couple knot tying cards, and these are your instructions that you can follow after we get done with this video and we turn it off and we actually get to tying these knots. You can follow along with these cards, and each side of the one card has it one of the, the Palomar knot or the improved clinch knot. Um, we've also included another one that has another knot called the trilene knot. And just to show you that there's many, many, many knots out there. And if you Google online fishing knots, you're going to find literally hundreds of them. Um, we're going to do two, two of my favorite, the ones I find best. Also included, of course, was the fishing string and a couple paper clips. Each student should have a paper clip, and I'll explain the use of those in a little bit. They come in the competition of actually tying the lot in this monofilament line or the actual fishing string and the competition we're going to have at that point. All right. So this is the activity kit that you should have received. And um, so real quick question, why would you not tie an overhand or a granny knot? That's the first knot you tie when you tie your shoelaces. The answer is um, it just simply will come untied. And we'll see this when we actually get to the monofilament line where you're gonna tie this in the string, such as I'm tying here, if you can see the little string. And when you pull it, it just quite simply comes unpulled and the plug comes off or the hook will come off. Um, also, the other part of this is that when you tie this in the string, if you pull it tight enough, the knot will actually pinch itself in half or pinch the string in half. And I'll show you that in a little bit. 
All right. This is a demonstration of what you're going to tie in with the improved clinch knot, and we'll go we'll go through that together. And this is a demonstration of what the Palomar knot looks like. All right. All right. And here is the competition schematic of what we're going to do in a little while. And we'll come back to this and I'll show us how, how we can do it. So right now I'm going to stop share and I'm going to come back. So you're going to see my big, big face so we can see it up close. Everybody see me okay now? Yeah. Wave. Yay. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is, and so you can see it on a better, in a better, um, in better position. This is the, the fishing lure, imitation fishing lure we're going to be tying the knots with. This is the paracord. And if you were to go through and just tie an overhand knot such as that, and you tie that on, in monofilament line, it's just going to pull through. And see how it pulled through there? And without that little um, glob of stuff from the, from the string, it would have just pulled out. So if you were to tie your fishing hook on, fishing lure on with that overhand or granny knot it's just simply gonna pop right out the other thing and I'm going to show you this in the real fishing line and so it's kind of hard to see but I have real fishing line here right and I'm going to tie that overhand knot in this fishing line and I know it's hard to see but trust me there's string here and I'm pulling that knot tight and right in the middle of this, um, there's a little tiny knot that's cinched down. When I pull that, it quite literally will pinch itself in half because the string gets so tight on itself in that knot that it quite literally pinches itself in half. So that's the knot we never want to use, that overhand or granny knot is never want to use to tie a fishing lure on. You're just going to lose your fishing lure. All right? So, we're going to, everybody match up in pairs, and, oops, second. Okay, you guys have your pair. You know who your pairs are. Get ready to go. All right. So, we have, everybody's in pairs. We have pairs of students. Is that what we're yep. All right. Awesome. So, we're going to turns back and forth. One's going to tie the knot and the other is going to help facilitate it by holding on to the plug or onto the other piece. Well, if somebody holds the cord, somebody holds the plug. And then you'll switch. You have to grab, right? So you can do it with partner. Uh, all right. Somebody wave at me and tell me when we're ready. I think we're good to go, right? Turn around. You guys are perfect. You guys are wonderful. You don't want to be in this sport. You can go. All right. So the first knot we're going to tie, and we're each going to do this. So we're going to do it twice. We're each student on each end of it is going to do it twice. We're going to take our fishing dowel. Someone hold that up for the other one. Okay. The other one, take the string, and you're, that person doing this knot is going to poke that string through the eye of the hook like that. Oops. All right. Everybody got that? Yeah. Yay. All right. So then we're going we're gonna to take that tag end of the string, the one we just poked through the eye of the hook, and we're going to pass it around this line five times. So it's going to go around one, two, three, four. Let's stop at four because it's a pretty thick string and it's hard to do. With monofilament line, we would actually go around five times. So you're going to end up with that. You're going to end up with it through the eye of the hook. And then the tag end around the running line five times. All right? All right. See where we created this little hole back up here, right here by the eye of the hook? Yeah. Pass that tag end through that little that loop that we created, right? And just with that, all right? Now this is the tricky part because see we then created this second right here. And we're gonna pass the line back through that loop. I think like a mess. 
Yeah. We all confused. All right. So guys, after they did the, the looping, they're trying to figure out how to bring it back together. All right. I'm going to go through this. Yeah. There you go. See, see, see. Watch. All right. So it's through the eye of the hook. Yep. Taking the tag end of the string and passing okay. it around that five times. There you go. Okay. Let's just go three or four, right? There. All right. And now I'm going to take that tag end and pass through that little, through that little spot right there where we created the loop. There you go. Through that loop. That makes more sense, huh? All right. And then I created another loop right here. All right. So now we just put it down and we have our improvement. Right? So does yours look kind of like that? All right, guys, so you're looking like this. You did it. I'm going right. to let the. Okay, trade partners. I mean, okay. get that tied a couple times. Practice is perfect on these on knot tying. You gotta okay. practice. I'm right. I'm right. And, your and this card we gave you. Oh, look at diagram. It's you know, on your card too. Did everybody get a good chance to tie it? Did we trade turns? Yeah. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. All right. That is, you were very attentive. So I'm going to go back to the share screen. I'm going to show you the knot we just tied, and then I'm going to show you the next knot we just tied. All right. Can you see that on the big screen? All right. This is the improved clinch knot we just tied. Does that rec does that look familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this one, if you turn your card over, and you'll see it, it's called knot. Okay. And I'm going to click to the next slide, and you're going to see what that looks like. Um, and then I'm so just look at the, take a look at your card, and then I'm going to come back to me. And we can look at this and we can tie it together. Okay? All right. Is everybody ready to go back to me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, oh, here I am again. Hi. Okay. This, is a, this is called the Palomar knot. And this knot is used when we have bigger hook or fishing lures or special braided line, those expensive fishing lines and stuff. Um, and this is also, some people just find this knot much easier to tie. So what we, what we do on this one is we have our string, we have our hook, our, our fishing lure with our eyelet. We're going to go through that eyelet, right? And so we're through. Now we're going to go back through that eyelet. And it's a bit of doing that back through. So what we end up with, however we end up with it, you end up with a spring going through the eyelet twice. And I'll hold still so that better. Right? Yep, push it through. Push it through. Okay. 
Watch how he's got his home. <laughs> now that we've got the <clears throat> now that we've got the screen through the eyelet twice, you know that overhand knot I told you not to use. We're going to do that right now with both strings and give yourself plenty of string on both ends. So that string in the middle there. We're going to take this and pop uh, an overhand knot by my camera. Yeah. Both strings. I'm going to tie an overhand knot. The dog, they can't see. Okay, so watch what he does. All right. Everybody got that? We got an overhand knot. Don't tie it too tight yet because we're not finished. See this little loop over here on the end of it that we've created? So we've got our overhand. We've got double string pulled through the eyelet. We've got um, an overhand knot and we've got it kind of loose. See it's kind of loose up by that eyelet. And then we've created this loop out here where the double string came through. We're going to take that plug and pass it through the loop. Like that. Right? And this is kind of a trick. You gotta then pull it down and make those strings snug up. Oh, and this ties so much easier. There you go. So our knot ends up looking like that. It's like a big wad of string. Could you show them that again? They were struggling to some of them to get it back through the second time. Okay, so let me. Uh, this, is a knot. this is a complicated knot to tie with this heavy string. When you actually get to the monofilament, when we're actually doing the monofilament string, the actual fishing string, it's much easier. So we'll start this one up with the paracord, and we'll show you many times. And you'll have plenty of times to practice. So we have the eyelet. Let's go ahead and just double the string over and see if we can get through the eyelet like that. That might work a little better. Watch what he's doing. So what I did was I just took and I pinched the string together as a double and I kind of wiggled it through the eye of the hook. Like that, and then I got it through. What? So I. Oh, there you go. Look. All right, watch where he's. All right, look at where he's at. Make sure you are where he is. All right. Then we just get our overhand knot with both strings. Huh? Like you tie your shoe. That's oh. first step in tying your shoe. Exactly. You yeah. Thank you. And then we've created that little loop over here. And we're going to pass that lure or that hook through that loop yep. like that. And then we're going to just work the strings down and get them tight. And he said, you're going to have to pull a lot because these ropes are thicker. So it's hard. Oh, that hurts. End up with that. Yay, I see a good knot right there. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So see that big wad of string right there? What that ends up doing is that when a fish bites on it and tugs it, it actually cradles the wire. Listen, guys, listen. It doesn't pinch in half. All right.
You guys are doing wonderful. You guys are just fantastic. Hold up some of those knots. There is one. Yeah, yeah, awesome. They're really working hard. You know, this is really great. I can see it from here. You guys are, you guys are wonderful. Who wants to see them, guys? Hold them up. You got them. Yep. And then pull. So tell me what school you guys are from again. We're Covington and South Sioux. Okay. So who who likes to go fishing in this crowd? Who likes to go fishing? All right. Let me give you a clue. Is Ponca, is Ponca State Park very far from your guys' school? No, it's actually about 15, 20 minutes. Really? Okay. So if you all really like to fish, there's a pond in Ponca State Park, and we stock that with trout. I mean, we put like 2,000 trout in there a couple weeks ago. And those trout are just fantastic and fun to catch, and they're wonderful to eat. So if you could, uh, you know, if you have the wherewithal and your family wants to go fishing, I'm going to suggest fishing. You guys are so lucky. You're so close to it at Ponca State Park because it's just full of trout right now that we put in there for, for the regular expo we would have. Since we're not there, we actually don't get to fish them. But you guys do because you're there and, and they're there for you. So I'm encouraging you as your family, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, go fishing at Ponca State Park. And they'll be there for many weeks to come. So use this, use this knot tying skill you have and, and tie some real hooks on, add a bobber to it, and go fishing for trout. So. Um, is that the pond that's um, pretty close to the exit into the education center? Yeah, it's the one right down the hill. It's got that wonderful fishing dock from it on it. Yeah, it's just perfect. Yeah, so, awesome. So yeah, simple fish, you know, I, and I can send you some links to our going fishing guide and it can describe how the best methods and stuff, how to go fishing there if you wish. That would be great. So we're gonna do, we're gonna start something, but I'm actually gonna let you do this as a class. I'm gonna share screen again. Because, you know, tying these knots in this big string is one thing, but actually getting to tie them in, in fine string is another. So when, when I supplied the kit for you guys, I sent a bunch of paper clips and I sent a spool of string. I'll find my camera here. So what I intend for you to do is have a competition in, in testing your knot. And you can do, you can keep records of this, or you can just have a competition. And what, what you need to do is, between the two of you, make a piece of string that's about three foot long, the, the monofilament string. And you can do this now, or you can do this later when you you got more time and, and uh, We'll do this one for so you take a piece of the string, and on one end of it, one of you tie a palomar or a clinch knot. And I'm going to tie, I'm in this fine string, I'm going to tie a clinch knot because I know how to tie those so well. I've tied a hundred of them, um, thousands of them. And I'm going to pass it through the that slot, and I'm going to pass it through there. And I'm going to now, when we tie real monofilament, real string, um, real hooks on to monofilament line, um, when you cinch it down, it'll actually generate heat and it can actually damage the line. So a lot of times we'll take and wet that little knot as it cinches down. So if you're at the lake, you can dip your finger in the water and then just wet that. Or if you have a can of soda, I happen to have a cup of coffee here and I'm just gonna take a rip of water and, and wet that. And that way, when it cinches down on there, it doesn't heat up so much that it actually pinches itself in half, right? We used to say you could lick the line, and that gave you the wet to do it. But since we have COVID now, we want to be safe, and we're not doing that, okay? So that's one person, that one on that side. And then you're going to have one of your partners take another paper clip, and in the other end of that string, you're going to tie another knot and I'm going to tie a palomar knot in the other end of that string. So there's, I passed it around, I go through, I'm there and I'm cinching it down. I'm going to get a little bit of my coffee and make that slick. All right, so now I have the palomar on, on this side and I have the improved clinch on that side. And this is where the competition is because 
I'm saying the Palomar in my right hand is going to be stronger than the than the improved clinch in, in my left hand. And the competition is simply pulling it apart until one breaks. And which one broke? This was the improved clinch. The string broke off of it. This was the Palomar. Guess which knot held better? The Palomar, right? So now you can do competitions, and I'm going to I'm going to show you how to set up that competition. I'm going to share my screen again, and um, and so you can set up a competition simply like this, where you have one person tie a Palomar and Allison next to you tie an improved clinch knot, and you guys pull your knots apart from each other. Well, in this case, Bill won. And in the next layer down, we had Anna against Jada, and Jada won with a Palomar knot. Oh my gosh, it looks like Palomar knots are doing pretty good. The next one down, this is me, Larry, and I went against Natalie, and she tied a Palomar, and I am proud of improved clinch knot, and guess who won? Natalie. All right, so the next one is is Anna again with an improved clinch against Diane and the Palomar one again. Well now we have, well it's looking like Palomars are doing a pretty good job, right? That might be the better knot in this case, but we also know Bill, Jada, Natalie, and Diane did a good job too. So it may be their skill or it may be the knot. So you can do this knot competition and you can just do it with improved clinch to find out who the best improved clinch knot tire is or the best Palomar knot tire or you can test Palomar versus improved clinch. So in this case, we went all the way through. Jada tied a Palomar against Bill's Palomar for the second round, and Jada won. And then that second round of that other category, Natalie and Diane, and Natalie won with a Palomar. And guess who won the competition ultimately? Jada, right, with a Palomar knot, all right? So then you can set these competitions up and um, within your classroom and you can decide who's the best knot tire or who's, which is the best knot. Um, and you can explore other kinds of knots. And there's actually a science to this. If you go online and Google knot strength, you can actually see that people actually get paid to test different knots. And, and, and when they actually make string, they have pound test and they test for the different kinds of strings and what knots fit best for it. So, whew, that was a lot of information. I'm coming back to me and we're going to do questions. What do you, what, what questions do you have for me? We had, we do have one question now. Axel, what's your question? Um, you have to pay to the do you know um, how much they have to pay to get into the park? The, the, there's a park pass, the daily park pass is $10, and or they can buy a seasonal pass for 28 I believe. Um, and then in terms of a fishing permit, they're all under 16 years old. They do not need a fishing permit until you reach 16 years old. So the park pass for your parent's automobile will be uh, $10 for that daily pass. Perfect. And then um, I believe in the video they said that they have different um, fishing poles and stuff that they can use. Is that true? That is very true. The, the park at the park office, you can go check out a fishing pole and they will be rigged with a bobber, a weight and a hook. And all you have to add to that for bait is corn works fantastic. I guarantee corn is one of the best baits or little pieces of marshmallow or pieces of noodle. Um, so anything from your pantry you can take up with you. All you're going to have to do is take a can of corn and get into the park and go fishing because you can borrow the equipment there. Yep. Perfect. What do we tell Larry? Thank you. You guys are Thank wonderful. you, Larry. Thank you, class. It was fun to see everyone. Thank you. We really enjoyed it. Great. Have a great day. You too.